Hi, I'm Joe Pereira from Boston College EMS and you're watching another Boston College EMS training video. In this training video, we'll go over the protocols and indications of backboarding a patient and holding C-spine immobilization. We'll first discuss some signs, symptoms, and indications that would lead you to believe that a patient needs to be backboarded, and then we'll go over the proper steps on how to do so adequately. There are several indications that would lead you to backboard a patient. The first is whether or not they have a suspected head, neck, or back injury. If there is any suspected spinal injury or the mechanism of injury or trauma leads you to believe that there could be a spinal injury, backboard your patient without delay. One of these examples would be whether or not an adult patient fell from three times their height. Furthermore, you may see priaprism in males. These are just some of the indications that could lead you to believe that a patient needs to be backboarded. In the next segment, we'll discuss the steps to properly secure a patient on a backboard while holding C-spine immobilization. Whenever backboarding a patient, it's important that you also hold C-spine immobilization. To do so, you put both hands on the patient's head like so, firmly supporting the patient's position. This can also be done while the patient is laying down. To measure a patient for a C collar, you measure from the patient's jaw to the shoulder blades using your fingers. Then, measure from the bottom of the collar, like so, to one of the measurements on the C collar. In this case, Kayla is a no neck, so I'm going to adjust the collar accordingly. You can then put the C collar around the patient's neck. and secure it so that it is adequately supported. After you completed your rapid trauma exam and assessment and you determined that your patient needs to be properly backboarded, your first step is to hold C-spine immobilization, which Kristen is already doing. Then you should apply the CE collar, which is already done for us. The next step is to get the patient in the proper position to be log rolled. Kevin is going to take one leg and put it over the other so that we can get even better leverage when we're moving the patient. To properly log roll, one partner puts their hand at the shoulder and the other hand at the hip, and the other partner puts one down at the leg and crosses over at the hip to get better leverage. On the head's count, we will roll the patient towards us, and then Kevin will grab the backboard with this hand that's on the hip and bring it towards Kayla's back. I will also check the spine to make sure that there are no other deformities. Kristen, on your count. Ready, one, two, three. We're moving Kayla as a unit, not to grossly move the spine. I'll now check the spine. There are no visible deformities. Ready, one, two, three. Oftentimes, when you log roll a patient onto a backboard, they need to be readjusted. We'll go over that in the next segment. After you have successfully log-rolled your patient, your next step is to make sure that they're centered on the backboard. In Kayla's case, she's a little off-centered, so we want to adjust her position. To do so, we're going to move her as a unit, vertically, parallel to the backboard. We're first going to have a motion going downward, and then back up. To do so, you have to position yourself so that one partner is at the shoulder, and the other partner at the hips. On the head's count, so when Kristen counts, we're going to move down, and then we're going to reposition our hands so that we move up so that Kayla is better centered on the backboard. Okay, Kristen, on your count. Ready, one, two, three. Okay, and now I'm going to move my hands, grabbing Kayla's shoulders so that we can push upward towards the center of the backboard. Ready, one, two, three. We're ensuring that we don't grossly move Kayla. There are several different straps that you can use to secure a patient to a backboard. In this case, we're going to use spider straps. We have the straps positioned along Kayla's body where they'll be strapped in. There are some straps for the shoulders, one for the chest, one for the hip or pelvis, one above the knee at the thigh, and one below the knee. Kevin and I are going to demonstrate how to strap in the hip. 
To do so, you want to strap in as a unit. First, go through the hole of the backboard. Making sure that the strap that's black in the middle of her body remains in the middle. As a unit, pull on the strap. One, two, three. And strap in. Do so for the rest of the straps. Another type of strap that you can use are quick clips. Quick clips are just straps that you clip on to the backboard. And usually you want to use at least three straps. One at the chest, one at the hip, and one in the legs. You can also use four using two at the chest where you cross over. In this case, we have three applied to the back row already. To put and apply the quick clips, you just snap in and pull. Especially on the chest, it's important to ask the patient to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out and strap upon exhalation. You can also tuck the straps in so that they are not in the way. That is how you properly secure someone to a backboard with quick clips or other straps. You may come across a patient that is standing that needs to be backboarded. To properly backboard this type of patient, you should use a technique called a standing takedown. Kevin and I will demonstrate how to properly do a standing takedown with two people. Let's say that Kayla has a spinal injury. After we apply the C-collar, our next step is to put the backboard up against her back and parallel. Then, with the foot closest to the patient, you put your foot up against the backboard to provide leverage. Then, with your hand farthest from the patient, you can hold C-spine by putting it up against her head. You then, with the hand closest to the patient, go under the patient's armpit and grab the backboard. Then, on a count of three, you and your partner should lower the backboard to the ground. Make sure that you work as a unit so that the patient's C-spine is not compromised. On three, Kevin. One, two, three. Work slowly so that you are doing this procedure safely. And walk towards the front of the backboard. You can then reposition the patient and backboard them successfully.